the Labour Party has won a massive majority in the UK's parliament. They're already starting to use it. So they're coming up with this plan titled Take the Breaks Off Britain, which I love that. It's a great name. It is. It's a fantastic name. Uh, Americans, we got to get better at our at our policy naming. It Biden, sounds very British. It does, too. right? Take the brakes off Britain. That sounds. It, it sounds like. It almost sounds. Uh, what like like? God damn it! What what's the word I'm trying to say, dude? I have, have no, no idea. idea. It doesn't matter. So, what is this concept of take the brakes off Britain? Um, this is a new legal measure that's going to force local councils and local governments to quickly identify land to meet future housing needs mm. that the government is going to predict. So the government, the, the central government is going to be, like, okay, we predict that you're going to need like this many houses coming forward in the few couple years. Make space for the houses mm. right now. Residents are going to have the option and like argue about like what the housing should look like, but they will not have the option of whether or not they will build more housing. They cannot say no. What about how much more housing? That is also a thing they cannot say no on. Okay. They're going to be given a quota that they have to produce wow. or have to zone for. They have to zone for this specific they have to number. zone for it. Yes. They you don't have, have to produce no. it. No. You have to zone for it. Okay. And so Starmer has said that any council that fails to come up with these plans, a minister will be appointed by the central government and then implement a plan of their choosing. Ooh. Which oh, is I hardcore, right? Yeah. Like, listen, we're giving you the option, but if you don't get your shit together, you know, it's Ooh, good, dude, man. the dream of, like, perfect political will. I know. Yeah. This is like they have wow. the majority. They're going to use it. Yeah. You know? It's it, huge. It, it, I, this might, this kind of comes to the end of, of my conversation here, but I, I want to talk about it now, I think. You talk a lot about Colorado's housing. And how you really like their transit-oriented zoning. And how it's like really focused on high-density requirements. Yes. It's kind of similar to that. Can you explain the Colorado zoning thing? Yeah, so, so Colorado recently passed a law to require, I think, zoning of around 40 units per acre. Um, which, is, which is like a, an apartment building with maybe three or four floors. Um, a few units per floor, 12, 12 units per building around in corridors that are near public transit because it really works first of all you need higher density housing than like duplexes or triplexes which a lot of people have talked about as like the missing middle and as what would actually be the solution it's not you need higher density housing than that because you don't knock out enough of the problem with these piecemeal middle housing solutions mm -hmm. so colorado has said okay let's allow an actual large amount of zoning, high density housing, and let's put it near public transportation so we don't need too many parking requirements, we don't take up too much space with parking, and we don't ramp up traffic congestion too much. That's perfect. Yes. The only thing I would challenge you mm. and it, is when you use the word, we're going to allow you to be more dense. It wasn't allowed to be more dense. Mm. It's you're going to be more dense and you're yes. going to like it. Yes. Well, it's zoned for. Right. It's zoned zone for. Yes. Yes. Totally. Oh, that's what you meant by allow. Yeah. Yes. Then you're right. Um, and that's that's the avenue that I think Britain is taking with this proposal. OK. And I think Br Britain is also they have way, they have a much longer history of public housing, way longer history. OK. Um, and I, I do imagine that since it's a labor government, there will be public housing being built. In sure. a lot of this. It will be happening. Sure. Um, so there's a lot of reforms coming out of the labor government. Do you have any questions about housing before I go into a little more? of um, You want to go broader? Yeah, I'm going to go broader here. Um, I don't think so. I mean, do you, do you foresee any problems? I think that there's going to be a backlash to the voter who voted out the Tories yeah. and wanted change. And now they're going to get the change that they didn't think they wanted, mm. right? They wanted more stability. Yeah. This is going to produce more stability 10 years from now. Yeah. But you're going to be living in a construction zone for the next 10 years. Yeah. And you're going to like it. And again, I'm saying that is a good thing, right? I want there to be construction. But zone. the question is, by the next election, does right. they already lose their majority? Exactly. And I can definitely see the Tories as a conservative party being like, the Labor Party has changed the character of your neighborhood. I can see that, but I also know that political will globally has been moving towards more housing. 
And the more media is disseminated more easily with social media, I think the more popular that building housing gets. I hope so. And the more likely labor will be to actually have a lot of support for this initiative. On this housing program thing, I I have to say I I live in a town where I am involved in local government, and we have been getting more and more pro-housing every passing year. We have. Exactly. We have moved to more pro-housing positions. I think the tide is turning on that. Yeah. And labor's taking advantage, and it's really good. The message of how bad nimbyism is, is just, it's too loud, and it's everywhere, yeah. and it's everyone who's thinking about renting or buying a home. Yeah. Any research that you do into why are home prices so high, you learn about this problem. Right away. Yeah. And so what's crazy is the Labor Party's decision to take the brakes off Britain and to build, build, build. Um, it's already showing up in their growth projections. The IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has upped the UK's growth projections from 0.5% to 1.5%. Holy shit, that is a big jump. That's a big jump. That's not that's not playing around with the Holy edges. Holy fuck. And where is this coming from? It's not just because of the housing deregulate or the housing the housing zoning doing changes and zone and plans to build more housing. It's coming off the back of industrial policy proposals. It's coming off the back of land use reform, housing production plans, direct housing production plans, ending the ban on onshore wind, mm. big investments into green energy. All these things are going to massively grow the UK economy. Totally. Now, it's not 1.5% isn't enough growth for Keir Starmer to fund all of his budget plans. He's going to have to raise more taxes or cut spending somewhere else to fund everything he wants to do. But if he gets that number up to 2% growth, he doesn't have to raise any taxes and he's able to f- fully fund everything. And if you give him another year, I mean, oh yeah, uh, there's, this isn't much time right. that we're talking about. This is about. one year. This is one year to raise a projection a whole percentage point. This is faster than the 1.3% projection for Germany or the the 0.9% projection for France. Starmer ran on being the fastest growing economy in the G7, and he just might do it, minus the United States, because we're the fucking best. Except for, except for the U.S., he might be the fastest growing country in the G7. 